KFI AM 640. More stimulating talk radio. I'm Bill Carroll. In for Bill Handel. He's back on Monday. Uh, we're all over this uh, decision by the Supreme Court of the United States. The Obama health care bill has withstood the constitutional challenge. And we're just trying to figure it out as we go here, including, yes, the individual mandate remains. And we'll spend time on this on the noon show as well. Uh, we have Dr. Jane Orient, who has been outspoken critic of Obamacare. I wanted to get her reaction to this. She thinks it's going to cost us all more. Doctor, thanks for talking to us. Yes, it is going to cost us all more. It is already costing us all more. And I haven't had time to read all 200 pages of the opinion, but I think it really is an outrage that the U.S. Supreme Court does not uphold the U.S. Constitution either. There is nothing in the Constitution that gives Congress this tremendous power to dictate medical care for all Americans, how they shall pay for it, which means ultimately saying what they can have and what they can't. Do you, uh, like me, think that uh, Justice Roberts sort of found a legal loophole to push this through? Well, under the Commerce Clause, it's not constitutional, but let's call it a tax, and we're all good. Well, the, the government said over and over again, this is not a tax. No, it's not a tax at all to, in order to get the bill passed. Yeah. And then, I mean, they sort of changed positions depending on which was more convenient for them. So now all of a sudden it becomes a tax to make it constitutional. I mean, you know, it's just unconstitutional, and all of this wordplay is is just uh, is just that. Yeah, I should also point out, by the way, uh, Dr. Orient is executive director of the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. Shouldn't it cost less if everybody has to buy it? Shouldn't that spread the cost of health care out? Absolutely not. Um, Forty years ago, when most medical care was paid for at the time of service, it was a lot cheaper because it did not have the overhead of claims filing and plus all the perverse economic incentives. To have this third-party payment for things that should be just routine expenses like oil change is probably siphoning off at least 40% of what we spend on medical care. We have too much insurance. We would have much more medical care at a much more reasonable cost if we did away with third-party payment for trivial stuff instead of making it making, making it even more extensive. What do you think it does at the patient care level? Does it change anything there? I walk in to see my family physician. Is it going to be business as usual five years from now? Well, your family physician may not be there five years from now. Why? Forty-five percent of doctors have said they want to quit rather than work under Obamacare. A lot of them are quitting just because they can't afford all of the hassles now. And if they're not getting out of medicine altogether, they're going to work for a hospital or for a big clinic where they don't really care about the individual patients anymore because that doesn't make any difference to how they get paid. They are they are just trying to please the person who who is paying their mortgage. Uh, but, but how does it affect the business of the average doctor's practice? Why? Why would they get out of it under Obamacare? Aren't they still going to get paid? Oh, they'll get paid less, probably. There are all kinds of constraints on fees. They'll cut them here and there if they don't f- turn in enough d- data, for example, or enough electronic prescriptions. But it's load- loading onto them even more compliance requirements, more regulations, all of which add to their overhead costs at the same time that their the amount that they're allowed to charge goes down. Yeah. I've lived in three different countries in my life, and two of them have a form of health care, universal health care. Uh, and I, I want to say, I, I, philosophically, I think that it's a great idea to cover everybody. I just don't know how to do it. And I, I haven't lived in countries that have succeeded totally. One of the downsides of having lived in Canada is that while everybody's medical coverage is, is uh, paid for by the government through very high taxes, it's hard to get a doctor. There just aren't enough doctors for the patients. And so the overall care, if you're lucky enough to have a doctor, is watered down. Is that, Are you saying the same thing could happen here? There could be a doctor shortage? Well, it's already happening in Massachusetts where the waits to get a, a doctor's appointment are much, much longer than any place else in the country. It that That's just how it works. And in Canada, it's not just a shortage of doctors, um, but also the fact that doctors are not allowed to do their jobs. Once they reach their quota, they have to go on vacation because they're not going to get paid anymore, but their liability expenses keep piling up if they keep working. I mean, people don't work if you don't pay them. That's just a fact of life. 
Well, you know what? And people are going to think that, that, that that's total BS. But let me tell you, I have a friend who is an orthopedic surgeon. His biggest frustration is he golfs too much. He said, I got patients waiting six months for a knee replacement, and uh, I've reached my maximum operating hours under the system. I can't help them. I'd rather be there helping them than that on the golf course. That actually does happen. Well, they don't have time in the operating room. They don't have a nurse. They don't have equipment. What else are they going to do? Well, they used to move to the United States and work here, but that might happen less so now under this. Well, it might. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Dr. Uh, Jane Orient. Healthcare is hard to fix. It just is. I do. I do philosophically like the idea if we could find a way to make sure everybody gets basic health care coverage, but it comes with a cost. you got to pay for it. And and it's not always just by paying for it through uh, higher taxation or being forced to buy health care. You pay for it in other ways. The service tends to get watered down. It just does. you got to be willing to accept that. All right, KFI AM 640, more stimulating talk radio. That was Dr. Jane Orient, Executive Director, Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. I'm Bill Carroll for Bill Handel.